So first, we will go to Representative Lamborn to introduce his bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for yourself um, for having this important legislative hearing. I want to thank the witnesses for the next panel that's coming up for having, I'm sure, will be an enlightening and helpful dialogue with our uh, members of the committee and yourself. So thank, thank you. Mr. Chairman, for decades, our nation has been engaged in a hands-off approach to managing our natural resources in the attempt to preserve wilderness. My state of Colorado has been a pioneer of this approach, boasting over 3.7 million acres of designated wilderness and another 4 million acres of designated roadless. And these acres are used for hunting, fishing, backpacking, and more. Like all Coloradans and residents of Western states, I appreciate having public land that is available for these activities. However, our national forests are facing immediate threats of devastation if we don't take the wildfire emergency seriously. That is why I have introduced the Locally Led Restoration Act, which attempts to establish more efficient ways of removing dead and dying timber from our forests. Research shows that many parts of Colorado have four times more trees today than the forests did historically and naturally. Not only are these forests overcrowded, but they are also full of dead and dying trees that cannot be removed. In fact, Forest Service Chief Randy Moore testified before this committee in April and stated that some of the areas of the country have a tree stand density of 600 to 800 trees. It is no wonder that in the fall of 2020, Colorado saw the two largest wildfires in state history, the Cameron Peak Fire and the East Troublesome Fire. The Cameron Peak Fire burned over 208,000 acres through two snowstorms, while the East Troublesome burned over 193,000 acres. What's worse is that these fires burned so hot that they scorched the ground underneath, removing nutrients, chemicals, and fungal networks that allow a forest to regenerate after a fire. In 1996, my district experienced the Buffalo Creek Fire, which burned 12,000 acres. The burn scar is still visible on the mountainside almost 30 years later as vegetation struggles to recolonize the land. That land is still to this day unable to be hunted, fished, or provide timber as the landscape recovers from the catastrophic fire. In current forest contracting, timber companies do not have a formal process to propose or counter offer a contract from Forest Service or the Bureau of Land Management. It's a take it or leave it scenario. And so many timber companies choose the leave it option due to the rising costs of hauling, the low price of small diameter timber and other factors. Right now, the Pike and San Isabel forests, which have already faced massive wildfires are full of brush piles that cannot be removed from the forest due to the cost and due to other punitive regulations. So that is why I have introduced HR 4717, the locally led restoration act, as the chairman mentioned. I also wanna give kudos to my uh, until recently staff member, Taylor Tugal, Tugal, who is now with the Western Caucus, uh, but he's been instrumental in forming this legislation. Timber contractors are the only vehicle by which land management agencies can carry out forest restoration. Therefore, it is imperative that Congress streamlines the contracting process to make it more effective for both parties. My bill would allow timber contractors to propose their own contracts to land management agencies on the condition that at least 10% of the timber in a contract is salvage material. To be clear, the 10% threshold is a floor, not a ceiling, and can be altered during negotiations if needed. This bill also increases the threshold with which the Forest Service must advertise sales from $10,000 to $50,000 to account for the inflation that has occurred since 1976, almost half a century ago. I appreciate the committee looking into this matter, and I look forward to forming a strong consensus on this important issue. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. 